Welcome to Motohead Garage. Today, we're going to show you what you get when you order a QS138 V3 or a QS138 V3. Yeah, it sounds the same, but this one's updated. That's right. These two motors basically have the same part number. They are the same motor, but they have slowly, QS has slowly updated this one. This is the second iteration of the 138 V3. They had one before that had a narrower shaft right here. And as you will, as you can see here, they, there's a step. And that step that you see there, that's going to be the difference of the second iteration of it. And now this is the technically third iteration, but they just call this the update. If you look on AliExpress, you'll see that they have all these specs and stuff. And we're going to go over that today. But the easiest, quickest way to tell is this one has no boss. This one has this boss here. One of the main reasons they took that off is because people aren't using it and cutting this off to be able to fit a larger sprocket. And this one even comes with a 15 tooth sprocket, which a lot of people want to run on this motor. And also you'll notice that there's an extra bolt and these have been adjusted a little bit different. It doesn't look like it's going to cause any clearance issues, especially for my build. But if you have a build where it gets really close here on this motor, well, this one is a little farther down. So something to think about as you are updating or making changes, because I'm only updating, not because there's any more power. I'm updating because I broke this one, which a couple of people have. So that's what the updates are for, to make it stronger, to make it beefier. So let's get these tore apart. Let's quickly go through what they actually change and the secrets inside and how this one is actually better than this one. And by the magic of editing, we have got these all apart. You see I broke this down, took the shaft off, and we're gonna show you here that there's a pretty substantial difference inside. It's a whole bunch of little things that can make a big difference. And what we'll start with here is our covers. The covers look to be relatively the same. And as you see, the inside area is quite a bit beefed up. So we have on the right side without the, the boss on it is the updated version. And the old version has that boss on it. You can see there. Also, they gone inside and increased the area, the amount of aluminum that goes around the gasket surface. And if you look at the bearing, this bearing here is quite a bit closer than this bearing here, which is going to put a lot less, I guess you call it leverage, on that shaft as these two shafts are different. So these motors, even their internal parts, aren't interchangeable. As you can see, this one sticks out quite a bit more, which is going to cause more leverage and possible gear separation as the bike wears in. And that's going to bring us to one of the biggest changes that we have here. As you can see, this bearing is still in here. The shaft is still in there. The back bearing carry the deal is still the same. It's the exact same bearing that we had before. But what the big change is, is going to be right here on the gearbox. We're going from a 64, a 6004 bearing to a 6205. It is a substantial difference. Like it is noticeably different. And to be able to accommodate that, they have a, a bigger boss here, which is not just poured, it's machined in where this one is just poured and as you can see the size difference this bearing here just clicks around inside there it is a huge difference which i think is going to be able to hold a lot more pressure also the the bearings holding the stators in on the gearbox side used to be on this one here is a 6004 bearing over here now we have a 6204 that's a that's a pretty substantial difference and on the hall effect side they even upgraded it there from a 6202 to a 6302. Those bearings are just a little bit beefier, hold a lot more axial load, I guess you'd call it. And so that's gonna really help increase the longevity of these motors that we love so much. Also, something I found out on the old motor that a lot of people didn't know was the venting system. As you see, they have these vent hoses that run up. And what that does is as heat builds up inside these gearboxes, it allows the air to breathe in and out and that kind of stuff. They missed it on this one here where they it went in and then there was no way for the air to get in or out of this chamber as it was sealed up completely with this gasket right here. So 
what we're going to wind up doing is cutting this. If you have one of these and it's not broken and you've noticed that your, that your seal leaks a little bit because pressure builds up in there. Not only does it push the oil out of the seal that goes around this counter shaft right over here, it also presses, pushes the oil into the motor where it does not need oil, where it's not good for the oil. So good for oil to be, let's put it that way. So make sure you come in here. I'll give you a close up of where to grind this area, where to give it a vent so air can travel right through this area right here. They fixed that on this case right here. As you can see, as I pull these two cases together, this is farther down. This little area here, where here it is actually sealed. So if you want to do it the way that they did theirs, you can do that. On this motor, the path is just a little bit different here. So what I would do is on the motor itself, right in this area, we're going to grind that away. On the back, back here, the Hall Effect sensor cover is screwed on on the old motor and is bolted on here. It's supposed to give it a little bit water, better water seal. I don't know. I've never had any issues with any of my stuff leaking on mine. I've pulled this cover off quite a few times. I pressure wash my bike to make sure it's clean. And so I haven't had that issue. Supposedly with the very first iteration of the V3 motor, it did have that. I don't have that motor, that problem. And they changed the cable size. It's so minuscule. I don't even know why they brought it up, but they changed the cable size. They go to the Hall Effect sensor. The plug is the same. It's all plug and play just like it was before. And also they do not have the heat shrink on the wires like they did here. So it's a, a little bit of difference, but everything here, the, the wires are basically the same. It, I, I'm gonna say that that's a, a non-issue and change, but the big issue is gonna be the robustness of this motor versus this one. I'm definitely gonna put it to the test, but we'll see. Hopefully it holds up much better. Hopefully I don't adjust the chain too tight, but now it's time for me to bolt this back together I'm gonna do my absolute best to make sure the gasket doesn't leak because I don't wanna deal with the oil leak that I've been dealing with here. Um, I also forgot to talk about this, but as you can see, these were broken The where these dowels go. That's what caused most of my issues was once that chain got too tight, it pulled and broke these real thin little ledges out. And on top of that, allowed these locating dowels as you can see here, to wiggle. So wiggle, wiggle, wiggle is not good when you're dealing with bearing alignment and stuff like that. So like I said, gonna bolt this together, get this put on the bike, get this testing. And um, I mean, I really probably wasted like three hours making this video just because I can't stop myself. I just love it. And I really appreciate everybody for watching the videos subscribing, and I'm going to make more one day.